And we wish you a happy Thanksgiving from Disney World. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, you tried to say. And inside HP Fieldhouse, Lake Buena Vista, Florida. It's number 17, Gonzaga taking on Clemson, all part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. This, the final game of our quarterfinal day already. West Virginia and Davidson have advanced, and they'll take on one another at semifinal play tomorrow. And about 25 minutes ago, was Oklahoma getting past UTEP. Hi, everybody. John Shambi alongside Fran Frischilla, and happy Thanksgiving to you. Well, we take a look at Gonzaga, very good team. Give us some history, though. These two teams got together, I don't know, about 15 years ago, a significant win for one of them. Absolutely. Clemson was number five in the country. Nobody had heard of Gonzaga and Dan Monson, Mark Few, Matty Santangelo. A win up at the top of the World Classic propelled Gonzaga into the national spotlight. And 15 years later, they're a giant. And Clemson now in role reversal trying to build their program. All right, we go one-on-one. -on -one, and Clemson, a very young team. And they'll look at a couple of their seniors. We mentioned Milton Jennings. The other guy is Devin Booker. Devin Booker, the brother of uh, former Clemson Tiger star. Trevor Booker now with the Washington Wizards. They need him to have a big night and a big season. And for Gonzaga, when you talk about their lineup and recruiting, they do as good a job as anybody in college basketball of mining the international talent around the world. Starting lineups now for Brad Brownell. He'll go with three sophomores, Rod Hall, T.J. Sappet, K.J. McDaniels, Milton Jennings, Devin Booker, Paris seniors up front. Meanwhile, for Mark Few's team, he'll start two sophomores in the backcourt, two very good sophomores, Pangos and Bell, Guy Landry, Eddie, Elias Harris, and Kelly Olenek, who missed the first three games because of team code of conduct violations, and he will get a chance to start. In fact, he's going to jump setter against Booker. And the tip ends up in the hands of Eddie Pangos controls Gonzaga basketball. Well, I love Kevin Pangos. He's really come into his own. Remember, these two guys, Pangos and Bell, had to play as freshmen last year, really stepped up big. Both of those guys can really shoot it. Gonzaga, a very good offensive team. Gonzaga right to a little pick and roll continuity offense. Harris launches. And a fight for the loose ball. It ends up with Clemson. And Clemson has wins over Furman and Presbyterian, so they haven't really been tested yet, John, but they've done a really good job first two games of taking care of the basketball. 11 turnovers a game. Jennings flips that one inside and is able to find K.J. McDaniels. Terrific athlete. He had a monster dunk against Furman last week very impressive more of a slasher not really a jump shooter and one of the things to be on the lookout for Gonzaga with a size advantage Olenek a guy they will isolate down low and then talked about Pashemik Karnowski here's Olenek at the rim gets his shot rejected Booker and Jennings, two guys have been around here for four years. Jennings, a huge recruit, a McDonald's All-American. He's really never lived up to the hype, John. I saw him play in high school at the LeBron James camp. There's Booker. Older brother Trevor with the Wizards. Both of these guys could really, really have a big year for Brad Brownell, and it would come at a great time because of the youth of this Clemson team. Just getting started here at HP Fieldhouse. Old Spice Classic, Gonzaga and Clemson. It'll take on Oklahoma tomorrow. And another rejection. McDaniel swats that one. And Kelly Olenek trying to make his presence felt early. He's gotten to the rim twice, but watch this rejection from the weak side by K.J. McDaniel. Boy, he hung in the air. He spiked that one into the Clemson bench. Harris putting it on the floor. Eddie now. And he buries the three. Oh. E. Landry Eddie, the native of Paris, France. And that's not what he's been known for in the past, but he's made three for three on the season behind the arc. Eddie, who was born in the Ivory Coast, grew up in Paris, and went to high school in California. 
And Eddie the rebound. Kick up ahead. Here's Bell. Slashing to the rim. Left hand wouldn't go. And it'll be Clemson basketball. So Gonzaga led by Mark Few, 14th season. To 13 straight 20 win season. How about the resume? Unbelievable. Second winning as active coach behind Roy Williams. His team won this tournament back in 2008. They beat a very good yep. Tennessee team. Led by Josh Heitfeld. And then you see Brad Brownell did a great job at UNC Wilmington and then Wright State, Indiana native. He's a born and bred Hoosier. Proud of it. Daniels flipping it to Booker, who's double teamed. And a foul on the floor. You see how quickly they came and doubled with Gary Bell. They doubled from the passer. Oftentimes you see that double come from the weak side where the post player can't see it coming. But Gonzaga, John, this is an athletic Gonzaga perimeter when you think about Bell and and uh, Guy Landrietti and then Kevin Pangos is not a is not a bad defender as well. He moves his feet. He learned that this summer from Steve Nash. Jennings over Dower wouldn't go. Harris the rebound. Bell can't hit. And a foul on the floor as they got McDaniels for pulling on Eddie's jersey. I mentioned Pangos. Uh, he and Kelly Olenek played at the Canadian National Team Development Camp this summer with guys like Mike Cabongo, Brady Hessel from Baylor. And then Steve Nash told him, he said, hey, you know, you can be a good defender. You move your feet well. This is a good athletic starting five for Gonzaga. Well, this guy, Gary Bell Jr., few just raves about how advanced he is defensively. Eddie again. And that one way off. Rebound Harris. Put back wouldn't go. Harris offensive rebound and he's fouled. Elias Harris about the middle of last year really stepped up his rebounding game. You know, I could, absolutely, John. When he was a freshman, you know, a number of people highlighted him as a high, as a lottery pick. A small forward, maybe a two guard. That's never been his game. He has embraced his last two seasons what he is. He's an undersized and athletic power forward. He's coming off 18 rebounds Sunday against South Dakota. He's a German import. I watched him as a young player in you know European uh, championships, and everybody had him pegged for the NBA after his freshman year. That's never been his game. And again, this was a guy who was he came here to go to school and play basketball. Yeah. He was not brought here to be an NBA player. Right. At least that wasn't the initial idea. No, a few dunks his freshman year and he became a quote lottery uh, pick. Nice move inside McDaniels. Yeah. Tell you what, Clemson has gotten after the Zags in his first four minutes. Harris with Jennings on him. They tried to find Bell and out of bounds. It'll be Clemson basketball when we return. Tigers off to a good start here at the Old Spice Classic. Back here at the Old Spice Classic, John Chabi, Fran Frischilla. Happy Thanksgiving wherever you are. Clemson by a point here in the early going over the number 17 ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs. Clemson Tigers led by their third year head coach, Brad Brownell, who's getting a chance to do his work in the ACC at the elite level and having to build a program. Very well respected guy. Played his basketball at, uh, in Evansville. He's a high school teammate of a guy named Calvert Cheney, not too bad. An Indiana Hoosier, an NBA player. Played at DePaul University, where he learned under Royce Waltman, an excellent coach and former Bob Knight assistant. But you know what? He's just a blue collar, vanilla, really good, fundamentally sound coach. He's building Clemson. The way you should from the bottom up. He's got a young team with some talent. He's got a couple injuries too this season. It's DePaul with a W, by the way. The same school that produced Brad Stevens, yep. who fair coach in his own right. Yes, I'd say so. And Brad Brownell's team, they're not going to be go out there and play in the 
high 70s or low 80s they're going to be a lower possession type team play defense well they are and they have to be right now because they don't have the offensive firepower to run up and down with uh, you know with the weak teams right now shot clock under 10 hanging inside and hitting is Rod Hall Rod Hall one of those sophomores you mentioned in the starting lineup who got valuable experience last year you go through an ACC season as a freshman and you're going to grow up quickly they get a foul inside. A young man from Augusta, Georgia, played a little football, I think, as well. Good strength right there. Takes that ball right through the 160-pound David Stockton right there. Nice foul on Landry Noko. David Stockton into the game. Here he is handling. Stockton, of course. Son of the legend, John Stockton, former Zag himself. Sam Dower flips it up. Harris, the tip, wouldn't go. No go to board. Clemson has frustrated Gonzaga early on with their defense. Well, they sure have. They're athletic. They move their feet well. They're sound. They play 20 feet and in. Jennings contested by Harris. Bell with the rebound. And they get a block on Jennings. You mentioned how highly recruited Milton Jennings was, and Clemson through the years has had some outstanding players. You think of Dale Davis and guys like that, you know, Tree Rollins. I'll tell you, the guy, John, Skip Wise, the all time leading freshman scorer in the ACC, only played one year at Clemson, but Baltimore guy. People still talk about him with the reverence, almost of a David Thompson. Stockton loses it out of bounds. It's a turnover. Clemson basketball. You know what you like about Hall and Sapp right now is they're acting like junkyard dogs and they're getting into Stockton, Pangos, and, and Bell a little bit. Now Demarcus Harrison in the game, the transfer from BYU. That's a great story. And Harrison, a guy that will certainly help out. Noko couldn't hit. Harris flying in for the rebound. And he's got four rebounds already. Harris inside and a travel. You know that again. It's like the move we saw in the first game that looked awkward and oh, uh, uh, I think he went off the wrong foot and it looked like. Let's see. One, two. Not sure. I don't think he traveled. Looked ugly. You know those European guys have that weird footwork. Jennings sets the screen. Sap uses it. Oh, I like Noko in there, huh? Good hustle there as Hall went after it. Gonzaga basketball. Clemson by three. A little over six and a half into this one. John Chambi Fran for Shilla. Happy Thanksgiving, wherever you are from HP Fieldhouse, your Disney World. <laughs> Rod Hall will sit at Donis Filer checks in. Another one of those young players, a man out of Notre Dame Academy. He's a Chicago guy. He said, uh, you know, it's different down in Clemson, but uh, he said, everybody's nice to me. People are really friendly. But you know, this young big guy, Noko, played at Montverde Academy. Played for a great coach. You and I know Kevin Boyle, who did a great job at St. Pat's in, New, in Elizabeth, New Jersey, sure. for many years. And watch this young man on tape. He's raw offensively, but he's got a great body. Here's a good inbounds play. Goaltending. Good look by David Stockton. David Stockton, as a freshman, was a risk taker with his passing. You know, he tried to do, you know, the impossible. He settled down a little bit, but he's their best post feeder, John. He's really become a key uh, aspect of Zag's basketball. Started as a walk on. Yep. And Zaga prep. Now we're able to collect the rebound. Pangos, and now it's Bell. Zag's on the move. Uh, and he flips it up and in. I love Gary Bell's game. He can score in a lot of ways. He's great in transition, great in the mid-range, and can knock down threes. Pretty good defender, too. Well, 
We're about to get our first look at Pashemek Karnowski who's at the scorer's table. Harrison shot contested soft touch. And Harrison the transfer from BYU Stockton weaves through traffic. Dower in deep had a good look at it. I'll tell you right now he, he, Elias Harris is all over those boards and he's really done a nice job of post feeding. Harris knocked that one out of bounds. I'm of, the, ball. I'm of the opinion, John, that this is one of the best backcourts in the country. They were freshmen a year ago. Gary Bell, Kevin Pangos, Gary Bell, can he finish at the rim? The answer's obvious. 11.43 to go here, and Clemson leading Gonzaga by a point. Old Spice Classic quarterfinal number four, part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. And the fans enjoying themselves, taking in a lot of basketball. West Virginia, Davidson, and Oklahoma all winners. And we got more college basketball coming up Tuesday night on ESPN. Four ranked teams getting together. Number four, Michigan will take on NC State and Ann Arbor. That's at 7.30. And then number one, Indiana will take on number nine, North Carolina. ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. All right, so Michigan and NC State. Mark Gottfried's team's got to bounce back from a tough loss. And John Beeline's group tomorrow will take on K-State. K-State coached by Bruce Weber, former Illinois coach. So it all runs together because Illinois last night wins the Maui Classic in impressive style. Their guard play was excellent. You know, everybody is somewhat in interconnected in, in this game. And talk about interconnected. Kelly Olenek and the big fella Karnowski. You say that first name. Pashemek Karnowski is his name. Pashemek. Spelled P R Z E M E K. Of course Seven, it is. Yeah. 7 1, 305, although coaching staff told me he's down to 290, but really, really an impressive young player. Young man out of Poland. Very, very skilled. He's got great feet. And an offensive foul, Joe DeRosa on the call. Here at HP Fieldhouse on Thanksgiving, John Chambi and Fran Priscilla. That last foul on KJ McDaniels, Rob Hall to the scorer's table, ready to check in. Oh, it's a good slip. Angles finds a Linux who couldn't convert. And the Tigers the other way. Filer will back it up and they'll run a little bit of clock. Over Karnowski, Olenek the rebound, and Pangos leads him ahead. Now Stockton. They haven't gotten Pangos shot yet, and now they shot off the mark. Drank Guinness. Oh, nice look. Great feed. Karnowski is fouled. Good ball movement. I think Kevin Pangos was hunt hunting that shot that time. Maybe not that it's not his range, but it was contested. But he bounced back quickly with the terrific dime to the big guy. Now watch rebound. Mentioned Draganis, redshirt freshman, and the big fella, Tommy Lloyd, who really uh, on that Zag staff knows international hoops as well as about anybody. You mentioned he found Karnowski scouting Kevin Pangos in the World Under-17 Championships a couple years ago. He's also played in the last two hoop summits in Portland. And uh, Gonzaga got on him early. You can see Ray Giacoletti, one of those valued, valuable members of the Zag staff, former head coach at Eastern Washington in Utah. His name comes up often among head coaching positions. But will again this spring. And they get Karnowski with that foul. So Shemek 
Karnowski, the native of Poland, and getting a chance to play in the Old Spice Classic. But the Zags won in 2008. I know this is useless information, but Poland has some outstanding young players, in case you're interested, and they really do. Well, you're the international guy. <laughs> well, I just want to drop that in. Of course, Marcin Gortat's had a nice NBA career so far. Olenek rebounds the hall miss stocked in up ahead not a great decision gonna know who you're throwing it to Harrison Jennings offensive rebound and looking for some help gets it over to Filer pretty physical first 10 minutes John hey. Filer's floater wouldn't go and they get a foul inside That'll be on Drain Guinness. And I mean, look, if you gave the score to each of these coaches, Clemson 10 9 with 9.30 to go, or I guess the better way to put it, if I told you 19 total points, 9.30 to go, Brad Brown out would have said, I'll take it. Mark Few said, not so much. You know, I, I'm watching Gonzaga offensively, and they're trying to they're trying to score in five and six point plays. You know, they're trying to blow out Clemson instead of just running offense right now. Offensive foul to get Booker as Drain Guinness able to step in to take it. Watch this young man Sunday against South Dakota. He's a redshirt freshman from Pampa, Idaho. Very tough, scrappy guy. You see, he just sets his feet and Booker runs him over. But you get the feeling on offense for Gonzaga, they're really, they're out of sync. Now they're being guarded very well, but they're trying to almost hit the home run instead of just run their stuff and take what they're able to get. They're forcing. Clemson has done a good job defensively. Bell now. Don't forget, Zags haven't played away from home until tonight. Oh, rainbow shot from Pangos and his first points. Paul going to work on Pangos. And Clemson has worked the clock most possessions. They get a foul on Olenek. Look at the other end. Well, you got to have this in your repertoire. If you're a guy like Kevin Pangos at 6-1, look at that floater before Harrison could get to him. And you want to, we call that the high paint floater. You don't always want to attack the deep paint, so you got to be able to make something happen in that high paint area. Both Bell and Pangos have that shot. The beauty of those two guys. They're likely to be four-year guys, and you're talking about two guys that already have enormous experience for Mark Few. The beat will definitely continue in the backcourt. Yeah, they were both very steady last year, Bell and Pangos. Jennings a three. Karnowski pulls down the board. Remember, Pangos kind of burst on the scene last year. Nine threes. In a 33-point performance early over Washington State, Karnowski's pass intercepted. You see, remember, they, they annihilated South Dakota at home in their last game. They, they, now, they beat the heck out of West Virginia opening night. But they are struggling with the athleticism of Clemson right now. Harris back in the game. Karnowski backs down. And a travel. Under eight timeout. Slow going offensively on both sides. Mark Few's team by a point. Big thrills away to Disney's Hollywood Studios, home to the wildest elevator ride ever, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Board Phantom Elevator shoot up 13 stories and then experience a thrilling plummet faster than gravity. Check it out right here at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Scary stuff and my experience with the Tower of Terror would be going on it about six straight times with the Frischilla boys. I remember that we had and you know what those boys are no, no longer boys. You're not kidding. <laughs> oh boy. 
I thought the Tower of Terror was uh, Shemek Karnowski, but he's off to a slow start. But. <laughs> Gonzaga with a lot of size, hasn't translated to points so far. Another team shooting well. 11-10, Gonzaga. Winner of this one will play Oklahoma tomorrow in our second semifinal. First semifinal will be Davidson and West Virginia. Good cut, good feed. Jennings the bucket. Tell you what, a lot of these kids on, on, on Clemson, not highly regarded coming out of high school, but Brad Brownell is just doing a, you can tell they're, they're sound, they're good defensively. All pressure's been great, hasn't it? Under 10 of the shot clock, Pangos rejecting the screen. Gets into the lane, tosses it up. Eddie the rebound. Kicks it out, Pangos a three. Can't give him that many looks. Well, nope. Jim Rat. Always trying to get better, Kevin Pangos. All right, so here's a note for you. First three games, teams had things under control. First three games, the Old Spice Classic, a total of six lead changes. We've had seven lead changes in the first half of this one. The takeaway, Eddie passes it off, Pangos. Great look. Harris point blank couldn't hit. Let's see if Gonzaga came with the double on the freshman Josh Smith. If they get that ball inside, let's see if they go to it again. Hey. Jennings hey. tried to tip it home. And they're going to get Dower over the back of Jennings. It's really important for Milton Jennings to get off to a great start, John. I talked about his inconsistency in his first three years. He shot 71 free throws last season in 31 games, which is just about a little over two a game. So with that kind of body and that kind of ability, he needs to get himself to this foul line. By the way, that last foul on Gary Bell Jr., not Sam Dower. We told you West Virginia and Davidson set up in a semifinal matchup in Oklahoma up by as many as 20 in the second half hung on to beat UTEP by seven they await the winner of this one and it's all coming up tomorrow here at HP Fieldhouse now before today's win over Maris when was West Virginia's last game against Gonzaga oh that's right on opening night that's right about 10 11 days ago you think they've been I was gonna say what do you think it'd be like to be in those practices <laughs> well you, we saw it today didn't we because mm -hmm. they jumped on Marist and looked big early great look Harris finds Dower Harris is so good in that high post area John I've really been impressed with what well, you mentioned the end of, end of last year just love the way he's playing right now Jennings looking for space. Gonzaga bench wanted a walk. Under 10 on the shot clock. Jordan Roper swings at the Filer. Filer looking for space. Got Bell all over. And a shot clock violation. Good defensive possession by Gonzaga. Brad Brownell a little frustrated. That defensive possession was highlighted by e Elias Harris not letting Milton Jennings get to the paint off the dribble because once he stopped that really those freshman guards were in no man's land 30 feet from the basket. And he swings to Bell. And the rebound pulled down. Clemson's been rock solid defensively. Not a lot of second shots either. Great work inside by Josh Smith. Another one of those freshmen along with uh, non Nanko. Was it Noko? Noko. Noko. I'm sorry. No, Landry Noko. Eddie down. How about this? Boy, this is good basketball right now by Clemson. Or as they say in South Carolina, Clemson. Clemson, yeah. Yep. I don't want to get in trouble on my Twitter, which is just about to blow up now that I said that. That's correct. 
Always fun going to Clemson, South Carolina, hanging out at SO with you on yeah. occasion. Tied at 16 here, first half. John Chomby, Fran for sure. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Harrison now, 11 on the shot clock, and now it's Jennings. Inside Smith rattles it in, four points. Excellent pass by Milton Jennings, able to break the defense down. Big fella Smith reminding a little bit of Harold Jamison from back in the 90s. And Smith at 6'8, 260. Now those Rick Barnes teams would beat people up with. Greg Buckner, sure. Tom Weidman, Jamison. Harris, wide open look. And Jennings comes away with a loose ball. Elias Harris can knock that down. He shot 40% from three last year. And a timeout called by Clemson. Breaking the action, Tigers by two here at the Old Spice Classic. 2.51 to go here, first half, and Clemson leading by two. Fran, they played good defense in this one. Well, they, they sure have. They're athletic. They're, they're connected, all five guys. They take away the paint. They force tough jump shots, and most impressively, they're rebounding the basketball, no second shots. And you can see under Brad Brownell. Now, some of that is pace of the game, no question, but uh, they're judicious offensively, which slows the game down, but Brad... Brownell's teams have always been good defensively, whether he's been at UNC Wilmington, Wright State, or now at Clemson. So under three to go, first half, and the Tigers leading it by a deuce over the number 17 ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs. Jennings almost lost it. Harris almost took it from him. That's a good matchup. Two seniors, two athletes. Roper buries a three. So Jordan Roper able to knock that one down. All of a sudden, the lead is five. Biggest for either side. The Clemson guards, the young guys, have not been rattled. And it can't leave Gary Bell open there. It was like he got to the foul line and everybody dispersed. <laughs> There's nothing to see here. Demarcus Harrison able to bury that one, so Tigers starting to heat up. Don't forget, Demarcus Harrison has played against Gonzaga. Yeah, three times last That's year when he right. was with BYU. Got immediate eligibility. Supposed to go on a Mormon mission. Eddie inside, hanging, couldn't hit. Impressive, John. This really has been. You know, talking to the Gonzaga staff before the game, they wanted to play a 75-80 possession game, and Right now, Clemson has got this tempo right where they want it, both because their half-court defense and judicious ball movement. Harrison offense. couldn't get that to go, but it's Harris a rebound. And Mark Few calls timeout. So the Tigers up by six and really doing it at the defensive end. We talked about Demarcus Harrison, Fran, and a, an interesting story how he ended up with the Tigers. Well, he was planning to go on his Mormon mission. He's a young man out of Greenwood, South Carolina. And when the mission fell through and he's going to go on the mission next year, he couldn't go back to BYU because of all the young men that leave and come back from missions, they didn't have a spot for him. So he basically went back home, worked during the summer. Brad Brownell told us yesterday he did not know that uh, the young man left until August. Offered him a scholarship. He's going to go on the mission next year, but he was a solid player. In fact, he was in double figures in the Iona game in the NCAA tournament. That crazy game where Iona jumped up big yep. and then BYU came back and blasted him. Yeah, Demarcus Harrison was actually recruited by Brad Brownell. So there was that type of connection there. And he'll go on his two year Mormon mission at the end of this season. And he'll come back more mature 
So Tyler Hawes is back for BYU is off to a sensational sophomore year after a two year mission. Hated playing those BYU guys man they're so tough and they're so nice. Bell looking for some help and he finds Harris inside and one. Gary Bell got stuck on the baseline. Harris got snuck inside. Take a look right here. Baseline, little dump off, and the strength of Elias Harris, the senior. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the Tigers having a magical day, leading by four. They're, they're, they're not trying to suggest this is a Mickey Mouse operation over here, are they? May have been directed at us, <laughs> but we'll talk to Todd at the break. Brad Brownell. I mean, I know no coach is ever happy inside. He's got to be pleased with the way his team is delivered in the first half. I agree. Defensively holding Gonzaga to 20 points, 32% shooting. The Tigers with only three turnovers. And Harris can't complete the three point play out of bounds. And Clemson basketball. But a 12 second differential shot clock to game clock. Roper pulls up. See if the Zags pull it out and just get one. Or well, well, see. See, David, see yeah, there you go. David Stockton thought Kelly Olenek got fouled, so when he threw that ball away, he was like, hey, the reason it was a turnover is because the guy had no arms. And having said that, I'm not sure that Mark Fuse saying, hey, let's just get one. Why give them a chance to get the ball back? Watch David Stockton now. He's a terrific post beater, but Olenek got held up by Josh Smith. So Stockton will sit. Mike Hart checks in. And Olenek can't get that one to go, but it ends up with Bell. Now, now get one shot. There you go. Got two playmakers on the floor right now, and Pangos and Bell. Either one can go get his own shot. Both guys basically can run the point. Let's see what they go with. This high pick and roll. Pangos pulls up, and a tip in there by Olinick. Gonzaga, the last point to the half. But it's Clemson leading by one and look at the job the Tigers have done on the Zags defensively at the break Tigers lead by a point we send it to the studio the Land Rover halftime report Todd Grisham and Andy Katz. Happy Thanksgiving from HP Fieldhouse at the break. The Clemson Tigers leading Gonzaga by a point. Part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's here at the Old Spice Classic. John Chomby and Fran Priscilla. What great defense by the Tigers in the first half. Absolutely. Gonzaga comes in scoring 94 points a game and they put on a clinic the Tigers. Really good pressure. They're athletic, John, and they're sound defensively. They help each other. Take a look at the block shot from the weak side by Milton Jennings. Again, Kelly Olenek first game back trying to get into the paint. And here comes KC McDaniels. And then another opportunity, a contested shot in the lane. The Landry Eddy is challenged. And enough of those possessions. You're going to have an ugly first half exactly the way Brad Brownell would like it. First half stats presented by Miller High Life. And you know, again, it's that shooting percentage for Gonzaga, just 33%. And the other part... Clemson turning it over just three times. So as we get started here in the second half, Tigers by a point, leading the number 17 ranked team in the country. And Clemson's been very good first two and a half games at taking care of the basketball. Oh, 
Good double. Call inside. He gets fouled. You know what you like about that possession? Gonzaga came with the quick double. And Booker knew exactly where to go with it. Hall just dove right to the rim and put pressure on that Zags defense on the backside. Now Rod Hall at the line. He'll shoot two. Here's a number on Rod Hall that any coach would like. He's played 65 minutes so far this season. He's got 12 assists. He has not turned the ball over yet. That's that's terrific. And that's that sophomore experience we talked about. Got his feet wet last year as a freshman in the ACC. Remember, they had Andre Young, a good solid point guard, Tanner Smith, Brian Narcisse. They lost some good players, but these young sophomores got a chance to get on the court a lot for Brad Brownell. Bell cut to the hoop, had it go off of his hands, a turnover. And Tigers basketball. That was an, that's an example right there of trying to use Clemson's pressure against them by going back door. The, the theory was good, the execution not so much. Well, Bell had a chance at it. Gary Bell Jr. just couldn't haul it in. Jennings got in too deep and rolls it home. Now, this is nice. Really good to see Milton Jennings getting off to this type of start his senior year. You get Booker inside as he fouled Sam Dower. So Booker's got three fouls. And Landry Noko is going to check into the game. Booker will take a seat. Devin Booker, the younger brother of Trevor Booker, who's one of the all-time greats in Clemson history. Watch out for Pangos. Good defense. Paul was right on top of him. Pangos hesitates, gets it to go. Man. <laughs> that was good. That was good defense. That was a tough shot and a kind bounce, John. Shooter's touch. I would say that's accurate when it comes to Pangos. For you or me, it would be a kind bounce. <laughs> <Right>. Very fortunate. <laughs> McDaniel's able to bury one. The young man has made a few this year already. Ooh. A let it from Pangos. That's the pace that Gonzaga would like. Absolutely. If you're Mark Few right now, you'd like to get this game sped up. Clemson, on the other hand, they're going to run offense and use a lot of that clock. Jennings couldn't hit. Harris the rebound. Elias Harris already seven boards. Remember coming off an 18 rebound performance right That's at great. the rim and lays it in. That's great basketball. You know what he did, John? He had the bust out dribble. He didn't have to throw it to a point guard. He came up the floor. He explored what he had, and what he had was pretty good. Right to the rim. I like that way to describe it. He did explore what was available and took it himself. McDaniels now. That was way off the mark. Another rebound for Harris, who's got eight. See how he busts out with that dribble? He doesn't need to find Pangos. Dower feed inside. Olenek was in way too deep with his position. And he ends up at the line for two. John, this is what we talked about. Watch Harris. Grabs a rebound. Doesn't need the point guard. Brings it up. Takes a look. Head up, high dribble, that's okay. To the rim, no help. That's good basketball right there. That's where he's really matured. He's a mobile but undersized power forward and a really difficult matchup. He goes 6'8", 240, Elias Harris, as Olenek drains that one. Six points for Kelly Olenek, the junior from Kamloops, Canada. His first action of the year here tonight, Olenek Suspended for the first three, code of conduct violations, team violations. Well, you know, Mark Few, uh, you can tell how what he thinks of Kelly Olenek because he didn't waste any time putting him right into the starting lineup. They, they told me this summer when I was up in Spokane at the end of August that he's their best inside player. Now, Elias Harris has something to say about that because he's off to a great start. 
Fight underneath McDaniels. Ball fake, and he's hammered by Elias Harris. Harris picks up number two. Harris figuring that it, he's only got one foul, so he's going to make the second one count because he's not going to make sure that uh, McDaniels can't get that ball up. Very close. I wouldn't say very close, but not that far away from a flagrant one right there. But good hard foul. And I said undersized, and you said 6'8", 240. And I'm talking about the NBA. Sure, absolutely. You know, he's not undersized at all for uh, for the level he's playing at right now. Yep. Olenek, who redshirted last year, and they get him for the travel. And they talk about it, how his body's filled out and the great improvement he has made overall. No, there's no question. In fact, even though he struggled a little bit tonight, you can see how much he wants to get the ball to the rim and not just settle for the long jump shots he did early in his career. Double double play. They get a foul as McDaniels had it slapped away. That one on Gary Bell Jr. And that's number three. And immediately Guy Landrietti is going to check in. Bell will take a seat. Now you mentioned this in the first half, and I'll just point it out right now. If you told Brad Brownell earlier today, hey, you're going to be tied with 16 minutes to go in the game. He'd be doing handstands up and down that sideline because this game has essentially become a 16-minute game. And you're playing a number 17 team in the country, and you got one of the youngest teams in the country. Rejects the screen, hangs, and they get an offensive foul. Pangos able to step in and draw that. Pangos came quickly on to help. Let's take a look. Established before the offensive player begins his upward movement to the basket. That's an NBA concept that guys like Joe DeRosa officially officiating tonight and Ed Rush, the supervisor of officials in the Pac-12, former NBA great official. They're they're gonna they're gonna utilize that concept. Is the defender established legally before the offensive player begins the upward movement? In that time, it was clear that uh, Pangos was set. Eddie right at the rim had his shot blocked out of bounds. Clemson ball. I mentioned it earlier, John. Noko, the freshman, doesn't really know what he's doing on the offensive end. But take a look at this. You talk about 6'10, 245. No, sir. Take that back home. Back at HP Fieldhouse. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Tied at 31. John Chambi and Fran for Schillen. Well, college hoops available live anywhere from ESPN, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com and with the Watch ESPN app. I watched some of you this weekend on Watch ESPN doing the uh, Puerto Rico Classic. Are you been there for the Puerto Rico tip-off? Sure have. Yeah. yeah. Oklahoma Who? State won it. I know you were impressed with Marcus Smart and that team, Markel Brown. Anybody else impress you in Puerto Rico? You know, I feel like LeBron Nash looks like he's taken it another step. You got to wonder how much Smart has to do with that. I, you know what? That's a great point. I saw LeBron Nash in a defensive stance, and I've seen an increased intensity out of him, John, and that bodes well for Oklahoma State. There, you are exactly right. Little zone now by Gonzaga. The one other guy would say NC State, TJ Warren, their freshman. Wow, can he score? Yep. Tied up 31 apiece. This is Rod Hall. They'll match up out of this zone now. So they'll show the 2 3. They'll play man to man out of it. No go. Wild shot after the offensive rebound. 
Noko is not a polished offensive player yet, but you've seen him have an effect on his game on the defensive end. Good look, Harris finds Dower. Really impressed with Harris's ability to affect the game. He's really good at the top of that offense in the high post, John. And let's see what kind of adjustments Clemson makes. They're going to basically go motion against the zone, spread out and attack off the dribble. They go possession arrow, and it belongs to Gonzaga. He's become so versatile. Look at him take a look at over the top. The cut by Dower. See, the thing you worry about with Clemson is they don't have nearly the firepower offensively. So if Gonzaga gets going a little bit and get this lead up, six, eight, ten points, going to put enormous pressure on Clemson. Angles had a great look at it. Jennings the board. Tigers the other way. There's that zone now, so you'll see Clemson not run set plays, but ball movement and dribble penetration. Harrison's three wouldn't go. Eddie the board. And a travel. A really good defense that time by Milton Jennings again. He almost took the chair out from under Dower, who was searching for contact. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> the perfect way to describe it. You have anybody ever do that to you? When Absolutely. You're, you're a kid. You go to sit down and. <laughs> well, the Zags have been better in the second half. Still haven't been able to get on that run and really take control of the game. They're up by two. Filer inside. Jennings, good work down low. Put back wouldn't go. And they get a foul on the floor. And that'll be on Gonzaga. And Dude. that one's going to be on Pangos. That's a really good effort by Milton Jennings. You know, he, he was bottled up. He got one shot at the rim. He was able to tip that ball back to Noko. Milton Jennings with eight rebounds. It shows. Short on that shot. Hall comes away with it. And they'll set it back up. Yep. New clock as well. What you want to do is move the defense side to side and then try to get into a gap with the dribble and make two guard you. Good matchup by Gonzaga. They're staying in front of those orange jerseys. Filer from deep. And another offensive rebound. Filer offensive board the putback. And you know what? Milton Jennings kept that ball alive one more time. Filer with a lot of moxie to Chicago native. First, he, had, he had new 35, but he went right to the rim. First basket in over six minutes for Clemson. Olenek soft touch. Well, that's his strength. He's trying to become multi-dimensional offensively. We got ourselves a street fight here. No kidding. Zags by two. Karnowski the rebound. Oh, good screen by Kelly Olenek. Legal. Olenek stopped, and so Pangos found Eddie. Noko was boxed out. Four point, Gonzaga lead. 
Take a look at this. The look ahead. Watch Olenek just stop. He's legal. And Guy Landry Eddy needs to slap him some five on that one. Zags leading this one by four. You know, one of the things you see around college basketball, fathers and sons. You see the kids now getting a chance to play. We have, you know, John Stockton. Yep. Of course, his son David playing for Gonzaga and, well, Michigan. You got Glenn Robinson's son, Glenn Robinson the third, and then Tim Hardaway Jr. Michigan number four against Kansas State, and that's tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern time on ESPN. You see Gonzaga going to the matchup zone. When they point in the zone, it means they're just trading off players. Right now, Clemson not really moving any bodies. Roper able to hit that one. Good high ball screen, the free Roper, another one of those freshmen. Getting minutes for Brad Brownell. Bell back in the game. He's got those three fouls. Feeds a Linux. Well, that and should have been goaltending. McDaniels, I thought he reached through the basket. Not sure. If that ball hit the backboard. Let's take a look at this, John. Strange play. Tough angle. Didn't reach through the rim though. Back here at the Old Spice Classic. Gonzaga by two. John Chambi, Fran Fraschilla. All right, so that play with Kelly Olinick. Yeah, this is goaltending, John. Now watch. First of all, the entire ball, once it goes above the rim, and it hits the board, you can't touch it. Now, you're going to see the ball's on its downward flight right there anyway, and you see McDaniels get a piece of it. So it was goaltending on two accounts. Now, having said that, it's such a bang-bang play that I think it was Zelton uh, Sneed, who was the center official, just missed it. You know, it was a bang-bang play. They're going to miss a couple. And we had to slow it down to see it. Yeah, we did. Shot clock. Oh, nice look. Stockton able to find a Linux as the shot clock was winding down. 11 for the big guy from Canada. David Stockton held on to that ball and let Kelly Linux clear his man on the back cut. He did a really good job of being patient. will launch and he gets it to go big three and it's a one-point game well and Filer made that play happen with that dribble penetration these freshman guards for Clemson getting valuable experience and Jordan Roper been a chance to play a lot and there's Roper charged with the foul now watch David Stockton now he holds on to this ball he watch him he's watching dribbling dribbling dribble Whoop. there you go Take a look. He's looking, looking, boom. No look pass. Pretty good. I've seen that before. Yeah. I've seen that from someone before. About a million times. That looks like him. Well, he's got he's got Karnowski, who's Mark Eaton. And he's got Elias Harris, who's kind of like Carl Malone. Karnowski's <laughs> rocking the Mark Eaton beard, too. <laughs> Olenek again. And Zach is starting to get in sync defensively or offensively I should say. Get an idea why David Stockton gets a lot of minutes don't you. Three guard offense now. Matching up to Clemson. 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 Yep. He played very well tonight. McDaniels lost his way for a moment kind of got hung up in the air. No, I, I still think if you told Brad Brownell, hey, you're down three with nine to go with your team this young. Yeah, they, they in have, a second. Yep, they have really done a good job tonight, Clemson, especially on the defensive end. Out of bounds, it stays with the Zags. 
That's a really tough catch for the big fella. It was well delivered pass, but the Clemson defense closed. And you know what? Karnowski didn't run anybody over, and he caught that ball cleanly, but there wasn't much space. Ah. Bell tried to go back door and he slipped. So a turnover there. Gonzaga's been very good in terms of efficiency in the second half. Mark Fuse team is 8 for 11 from the floor. But again, only 11 field goals. I mean, 11 field goal attempts. 8 of 11, they're only up 3. Yeah. Booker squaring up against Karnowski. And Stockton does well closing on Roper. And Booker is fouled. That was a smart play. That ball was a loose ball. And when that save to Booker went to the corner, he had Karnowski out there. And as good a feat as he has, he doesn't have that good a feat that he could keep Booker from getting a running start to the rim. And the heads up play by the senior. Elias Harris coming back in. Harris so far in this one, eight points and eight rebounds. Karnowski will grab a seat. Unless things change, John, Gonzaga's, uh, their offensive box scores is not going to be pretty compared to the first three games where they average 94. Well, that's good defense. Harris. Good bank at home, made a good look at it. Tell you what, Rod Hall has done a really good job on Pangos. I thought both Filer and Roper, the two freshman guards, have been really good for Clemson. Look at this. And in and out. Harris is ninth rebound. Look at Stockton, he's good. Oh, Violet oh, tripped on him. When you're even, you're leaving. As long as Stockton kept the defender on his side and wouldn't let him get in front, he's gone. Remember that term, when you're even, you're leaving. Oh, I have my list of Fran Frischilla-isms. Don't you worry. I mean, I've already been able to use piece of the paint before you have <laughs> so far today. Gonzaga ranked 17th in the land in a battle on their hands. Zags by four as we come down the home stretch, John Shambi. I want you to take a look at David Stockton. He's had an effect on this game with his passing. Now watch as he gets into Filer. He's not going to allow Filer to get in front of him. Freeze it, guys, if you can. So that means if you're even with the defender, you're eventually going to leave him. Now roll it, and you see him go to the rim because Filer can never get his body back in front of David Stockton. Very, very clever play. Obviously not unexpected. But David Stockton and the Gonzaga Bulldogs, we've seen them go with that three-guard attack. It's interesting because the Zags have so much size with Karnowski and Olenek and then as well Sam Dower. But instead they've gone three-guard attack with Pangos Bell. And this guy's son, John Stockton, the former Zag. How about this? Similarities? It really are now. You know, obviously, John, Hall of Famer. Great speech, by the way, he, he gave at the Hall of Fame. And that's one of the best speeches I've ever heard at the Basketball Hall of Fame. But you know what? Uh, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And I think he's a much better decision maker when he was early in his career, because he, he tried to make everything happen, every pinpoint pass. Pangos able to bank it home. Largest lead for Gonzaga is they're up six under seven to go. Six points in this game so far. It feels like 12. They both teams have locked down tonight. It's going to be the issue all year for Clemson. Where are they going to get their points from when they're in that ACC high level type comp? Harris so under control right there. Really hesitated, explored as 
you said earlier, and then went at the bucket, and all of a sudden it's an eight-point game. Absolutely. The maturation over four years of Elias Harris, who's been, you know what, John, it's so ironic. He was overrated as a freshman when everybody had him in the NBA lottery, and now he's one of the underrated college players in the country because of his versatility. He passes, he rebounds, he can score, occasionally make the three-point shot from the top. He's a real facilitator in that offense because he's often catching the ball at the end of the break at the top of the key and able to make plays and not put the pressure always on the backcourt. Excellent rebounder, can score. I mentioned the fact that no one focuses on that freshman year. He also dealt with some injuries as a sophomore at shoulder and as well had an, an Achilles injury. But you know, he passes the ball well. Last year, he shot 50% from the floor. He shot 41% from three. Exactly. So he's a big-time weapon in a lot of areas. You know, as good a shooter as he showed to be last year, I think what I like about him this year so far is his, his bread is being buttered in the paint, which is where I think it should be. I think he's become a really good teammate. Ten of the shot clock. McDaniels now to Booker. Booker grabs his own miss and they'll set it back up. Where do you want to see him go? I think you got to go inside and play through Booker. They're going to double team him, but Booker's done a good job of finding the open man. Throw it in there. They'll go pick and roll. Booker's got only three points in the game. McDaniels and they get him for the walk. Only the seventh turnover on Brad Brownell's team. That's a great point, John, because they came into this game averaging, you know, in terms of turnover percentage, only a, only a turnover on 11% of their possessions so far, which is very low. Well. Hall grabs a seat. Gonzaga by eight. Just about five and a half to go. Pangos. Shot. They continue to go with the three guards Stockton, Bell, and Pangos with Olenek and Harris. This has clearly been their best lineup, at least for tonight. And they get Bell with the turnover. Well, they had good rhythm in that possession until Bell got stuck on the baseline because they went to a random ball screen offense involving those three guards, but Bell just got himself stuck down there when he picked up his dribble. Under five to go, Brad Brownell's got two freshman guards in the game. Byler and Roper. McDaniels had it knocked out of bounds. And both Rick Crawford and Joe DeRosa say it stays with Clemson. Here's the cut by McDaniels. <laughs> See if the double comes. Booker a little out of control, and they get the foul. Well, that, what I like about that possession for Clemson is that they spread the floor and it was difficult to get the double to come. Booker was able to operate one on one. That foul on Olenek is fourth. And Booker kind of throws his body into Olenek. Olenek's trying to back up. Olenek comes out. Dower will check in. First game of the year for Kelly Olenek. Booker will try and make it a six-point game. It's funny. Six points, not much, but in this game, it, feel, it still feels like 12. Absolutely. 
<laughs> I'd love to be down six to the 17th ranked team in the country with all these young guys. In a little zone right now. Two, three. See if they match up out of it. And one, Elias Harris. Great work by David Stockton. Tell you what, he's made two or three, four post feeds tonight. He got the layup in transition. Take a look at David Stockton now. He's going to look over the top of the zone. Harris has inside position. First possession tonight of zone by Clemson. And Elias Harris does a great job of sealing Jennings away from the basket. But credit this guy for finding him. Coaching staff has told me all summer and fall that David Stockton is their best post feeder, and we've seen that tonight. 13 he, points and nine rebounds for Harris and a nine point Gonzaga advantage. He had a serious infection, I think, early, like late last summer, early last, last fall, as I recall, and he really didn't get his strength back, David Stockton, until later in the year. Clemson ice cold right now. No field goals in about six minutes. Good ball movement right there. They basically have three guys who can run the point in the game and Pango, Stockton, and Bell. And three shooters. Look at that post feed. Look at that post feed. I'll tell you what, the MVP of the second half tonight is the, is the smallest guy on the floor for Gonzaga. David Stockton has been brilliant. We close in on three minutes to go, and Gonzaga's starting to pull away up 11. Filer able to answer. Adonis Filer, the freshman from Chicago. See, I think if you're Gonzaga right now with great ball movement and ball handling, just run some clock. Take what the defense gives you. Don't force it. Byler couldn't get it to go off the glass. Stockton tracks it down. Well, right now it's a possession game for Gonzaga. You're up eight. You've got the ball. You've got shot clock. David Stockton's made quite an impact. Sure has, John. Great post feeds. Got some easy baskets for Gonzaga, and they've been few and far between tonight versus Clemson. One spot left in our semifinals here at the Old Spice Classic. West Virginia and Davidson have advanced, as has Oklahoma, and the Sooners await the winner of this one right now. It is Gonzaga up by eight. You know what's so sad about being away from home on the Thanksgiving? No turkey leftovers. You know, the cranberry sauce and the turkey on the roll, watching college basketball. I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, not that Orlando in, in this place hasn't been fabulous, because it always is, but. Yeah, you want some leftovers. Exactly. Gonzaga by eight. Clemson's played great defense in this one. Playing a little keep away right here. Mike Hart has checked into the game for Gonzaga. I like it. Clock is your friend with this lead and superior ball handling. Another great feed Man. by David Stockton. Seven assists. I mean, you know, he's been... He's been the difference in the second half, John. There's no doubt because those seven assists, they were all easy baskets, which Gonzaga got almost none of the first 30 minutes. Filer with a bucket. That three-pointer gets it back to a seven-point game. A little pressure now by Clemson. Dower looking for some help, and he gets fouled.
So a seven point game with 119 to go. You know, the idea of an assist at certain points, it gets stretched a little bit tonight. David Stockton has seven assists, and I'm talking he's got seven assists. He basically has seven passes that have led to layups. Exactly, exactly. And you know what you love about it? His teammates are ready for those passes because oftentimes a great passer will throw passer, passes to his teammates who don't realize they're open. But because of what he's done over three years, you have to have your head on a swivel and your hands ready because he will find you. He's made some tough looks make really easy. And really, he's the difference in the game, John. Seven assists is a career high, by the way, for the junior from Spokane. Nine point game. Winner of this one will play Oklahoma tomorrow at our second semifinal. First semifinal will pit West Virginia against Davidson. Booker, I uh, beg your pardon, Harrison comes oh, away with that loose ball. That's why Mike Hart's in there. That's exactly like why Mike Hart is in the game right now, the former walk-on. Our Old Spice player of the game, Elias Harris, 13 points, nine rebounds, also four assists, still with a chance at a double-double, but at a big impact. And, you know, as a post player in the high post, he distributed the ball well. No, he really did. I think he and Stockton were absolutely the difference tonight. Really impressed with uh, Elias Harris, John. I just love the energy. I saw this Sunday against South Dakota. It really impressed me. But he's having an effect on the game inside. He's having an effect on the game with his ability to score, which is a given. And he's dropping some dimes as well. Good ball movement. The senior is stepping up, and uh, you wouldn't expect uh, anything less. You know, if this was if this was hockey, and they had the players of the game, David Stockton would get the second. What do they call the second? Second player? star. Second star. That's yep. it. The stars of the game. Yep. Yeah, he get the second star. The second star. Does yeah. he get to still skate around and come out, or? Yeah, they will. They go three, okay. two, and one. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Usually what happens is, I mean, it depends on the guy, but the, you know, the third star is not going to skate quite as long, the right. second star, and then the, the first guy will, you know. Well, David Stockton could skate around there tonight with, with Harris. Because he's been skating on these Clemson guards all night. No doubt about it. Up next here on ESPN2, Drake and California. That's at the conclusion of our game. Trying to get that trap set. Stockton loses the ball, a turnover. Got to score quick. Like Tyler this kid. Oh, into the lanes, played great. Yeah, he sure has. He's got that Chicago toughness. Ten points for Filer, and he's charged with the foul. Both he and Jordan Roper have made an impact on this game, and obviously Brad Brownell trusts them because they played big minutes and important minutes. You know, there's a former Zag in here tonight, Jeremy Pargo, a Windy City guy who is here coming off a 28-point performance last night for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And anytime you got those Windy City guys, boy, they, they back down from nobody. And uh, Filer has uh, been impressive. Same thing now. Attack, get in the lane. If the three's there, take it. Daniels couldn't hit, but Booker gets shoved underneath. It'll be one and one. Eight team fouls on Gonzaga as Hart was charged with that foul. Dower checks back in. And one and one for the senior Devin Booker. Ball checks back in, as does Gary Bell Jr. And David Stockton will grab a seat. Had himself a great game. Career high seven assists. Oh. 
That one out of bounds. And it will be Gonzaga basketball. Take a look right here. Ball knocked around, no block out. Yeah, a little touch right there by Harrison. They foul Dower, and he will go to the line. So Gonzaga about to escape, and that'll set up a matchup with Oklahoma tomorrow at our second semifinal. But the Zags, you know, offensively shut down by this Clemson team, who even though the Zags were much better in the second half in terms of efficiency, Clemson still dominated in terms of the pace, the style. Didn't let Gonzaga and it, get out and run. And as crazy as it sounds, it's a seven-point game. You know, and so I think Brad Brownell did everything he could, and his team did as well. Great effort, but the defense was generally very solid. And, and I got to tell you, you mentioned it. David Stockton got Gonzaga some easy baskets, and that's the difference in this game. Dower can't hit the second. Got to get something quick. Filer can't hit, Hart the rebound. Now they're not going to foul. Good effort by Clemson. Gonzaga needed this. First three were easy. Fifty-seven forty-nine. the final. Mark Fuse team gets the win, and our semifinals are set. West Virginia and Davidson tomorrow, 1230 Eastern on ESPN. And Oklahoma will take on Gonzaga tomorrow, 730 Eastern on ESPN2.